All right, we are live. Welcome to the Spin and Backfist MMA show for Wednesday, March 27th, UFC Atlantic City edition. Hey, Jersey card. Hey, oh, hey. You'll forget about it. Forget about it. Get out of my way. I'm walking here. It's Robbie Fox, it's Big Ev, and it's Jack Mac. As always, we are here presented by Barstool's Best Vodka, the official vodka of Barstool Sports, New Amsterdam. Find your wins with New Amsterdam. You saw them in the Octagon this weekend. You see them in the Ox Octagon every weekend because they are also the official vodka of the UFC. They're born for an uncompromising passion for great vodka. While making great vodka is their passion, they're most inspired by those who stay true to who they are and share an unbridled passion for everything they do, from pursuing dreams to celebrating with friends to having an epic night out. New Amsterdam is always going to help you get through that. The best in the biz and Barstool's official vodka for a reason. Yes, New Amsterdam, we got it right here on the table. It's it's phenomenal. As Big Ev says, best bang for your buck. The best in the game. It's the best. Co-signed by the Double Vodka Don. Easy. It's vodka. Easy. Double Vodka Don. I mean, it's the perfect partnership. Yep. And we've, I mean, New Amsterdam and Barstool Sports have gone back a very long time. For sure. Pink Whitney, get it in stores now. Always, they got the standees and stuff. It's nice to see. We got a lot to talk about. We can talk about last weekend's fights. We can talk about some news. We can talk about this upcoming weekend's fights. Atlantic City, obviously. Shout out to everyone in the chat. Shout out um, Mitt Romney in the chat. Says, Sounds like 301 June in Newark, Islam Poirier, and 304 in July in England, Aspinall and Edwards. Certainly seeing those rumors. It'd be nice if that gets booked. But 301, that's, he means 301 is 302. Brazil. Yeah, 302. Um, but yes, June 1st, it sounds like... Yeah, there you go. That's what the rumor is. It, and then now they're already booking fights, 302. We're very much hoping it's Jersey. That'd be that, nice That's I know there's there was a He's report sick. that they filed for the license to like do yep. an event on June 1st in Newark. For like $5 million they put in for it or something yeah, like the, that? Yeah, the Prudential, which is yeah. where the, the May 288 was, the May card. Uh, we went that to that That was, that was, was Al, Aljamain, there Aljamain yep. Cejudo. Definitely, yeah, definitely. I mean, play. that arena is great. It's wild to think that was already 288. I feel I like that feels like it was yesterday. Me and Jack had really good seats forever ago. Yeah, yeah we, good. we had like a full row, so we just yeah. like, uh, we just spread out. That was also the most interesting like press backstage area I've ever seen because Newark just like the stadium didn't build a press room for some reason. So they put us under the seats. So like at any time that there was a fighter interview that was happening like during a fight, we could hear like the seats going crazy right above them. That's interesting because I mean it's where like the, where the devils like the play. devils play like Seton Hall's played there yeah. for a long time like a lot I mean the Nets used to play there back in they the day they literally just curtained off an area Concerts, below obviously, seats but they obviously don't depress but all these sports things obviously yeah. do press conferences they do it might have been yeah, I mean, might have been like they might have a press room for a very small amount of press I don't but very strange strangest setup I've ever seen yeah we all, I had the strangest experience trying to get back to the city. Last oh, time that, I went, that was bad. I was stranded outside the stadium till like yeah. three in the morning. I mean, yeah. I walked to a gas station like decently far away. Yeah. Shout bad. out Andrew Gombes. I, I, we took it home. We almost got hit by a train that night too. Oh, Jesus. While the Uber that picked us up, we were down to 2% on our phones. It was looking bad, but oh. we, we found a way through. That being said, this time we will be We are more still prepared. hoping the, the, oh no, the, the, the I will still be there. going. Yeah. I just have to be I'll more be prepared. Yeah. Need to like drive there or something. Like I need to make sure my car is there. So yeah, I, I yeah, have yeah. an escape plan. Yeah. Um, where do we want to start with last weekend's fights? Uh, yeah, we can't. I that mean, very there's not much. You want to talk about. forgettable? It's forgettable. Very guys. forgettable. Yeah. Almost like, know, like was... almost the whole card. Yeah. There was not much to really like. There there was some good like there was some good fight like the only like. A a Aaron Steve Wynn was like a really it was a banger, but I mean AJ Dobson broke our heart. Yeah. So many fighters broke our heart. Oh, dude, <laughs> Do yeah, so many. Dobson was doing great. Dobson was, I Dobson had him hurt so bad, and I don't think he must have not realized yeah, how no, bad he had him hurt. No way did he realize it. because he had him. I think if he, I think if he just like just went for it, I think he got it. He was gonna get it. And then what's his name had his back. I uh, had Mike Davis's back. No, Miles not, John's back. Yeah. Um. Why? Uh. Why am I Cody drawing? Cody Gibson? Boy? Yes, Cody Gibson. Yes, yes, yes. And he yes, didn't yes. go. He had a, like with three minutes to go. I mean, there were so many. I ended up losing some money on the card. Holabod just fought horribly. Kibos, Kibos did have like moments. I don't regret that bet. I think it was a decent bet, but Rose looked fine. Now, yeah. he, uh, Chatbot Jared Talbot was probably like the star of the card. Yep. Talbot was definitely the takeaway for sure. You um, asked a good question in the chat. 
is he like he's kind of this guy is so much hype now people are saying is he a fraud now i'm gonna because yeah, i think he's like since simon's good like i think what he did to simon was impressive like he's obviously good but i wonder is he like because now we have people talking about is he like championship good and that I still I think very much remains to be seen. Yeah, that, that I, I, I think he's I think he's he's like earned like the respect, but how like now I just think people are now talking about him like oh like he could go and beat Sean O'Malley tomorrow. A lot of O'Malley, and I don't think that's yeah like I don't think he, I think O'Malley would cook him. But agreed. Maybe, maybe like obviously it's good like stylistic matchup just that they're both strikers. I would love to see him against a really good grappler. I think someone threw out a name that I thought was good. Like what like what happens? He goes fights like Ricky Simone. How does yeah. like that? Maybe he gets. Maybe he does knock him out. Maybe he is that good. Yeah. Like, I, but I, I would just like to see him fight a, like a gra- a real grab. Like what about like Mario Batista? Yes, great, great person, great example. Like, if he fights someone like that, how does it go? Because that I'm still not. He's still really sure. young. Uh, there are some questions about his commitment to the game. But here's the thing: some guys like you want you think of this guy who's a Habib in the mountains, only wrestling. Sometimes guys are different, but he's a uh, he's the first true. I think in my mind, not by age, because obviously we've had younger Raul Rosas Jr., but he's the first Gen Z fighter. I mean, he's like Jared McCain, Caleb Williams, painting the, <laughs> fight, the, the, the fingernails. I didn't, I didn't realize so the aerial that he has like the septum. Yeah. That, that was like, I was like, oh, wow. Was, <laughs> septum ring black nails. I was like, oh, he's like really like. like he goes to like. Burn. He, yeah, he's like an e-boy. Yeah, he goes <laughs> to Burning Man. Like nice. That. Do you hear he explained the, the, the circle tattoo? No, I didn't. And I want to hear the explanation. It's it's wild. It's I've always been such curious. an e-boy answer. Okay. It was like, it, and it's he has one in, in, for, the, he had, for example, the people that he has like, like a just filled in black circle. That's in the same spot on like on the front and the back, like his stomach and his back. Yeah. And he said basically it's some meaning of like basically like just like a void in like your soul. E boy, yeah. Like the most e boy ants. I when he said it, I was like, that's like almost once I saw him with his fingernails painted and like the well, I knew they were painted. But once it really accepted ring that that combo. Yeah. And then he said that I was like, oh my, that's he's the Caleb like, Williams of the UFC. <laughs> but like, but times like a thousand. Like Caleb Williams is not even. Close yeah. No. To that no. 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 I know. Not to make this into Caleb Williams, but. Peyton Talbot, uh, I'm, I mean, I was really impressed. His speed against Simon, who's like, I mean, let's not act like he's amazing. But, I mean, Simon was a pretty big prospect not too long ago. S- Talbot looked like he made Simon look like a Damn, Yeah, he's like a Jerry thinks he smokes Rob Font. Like, I don't even know about that. But I, Rob Font, Rob, I, the, he would hurt the, Rob The only Font. thing that's what I'm saying, Rob Font's chin is so, like, yeah. I just think, yeah. I mean, he, he – Talbot – Knocking him out would not shock me. I at would all. take Rob Font in that fight, though. It would be, it would be. An, wait, who's the guy who got knocked out by Rob Font? Adrian Yanez. I would love to see Yanez would probably get chin checked by him too. I actually think that'd be a good fight. Good fight. Yanez just got booked. Yeah, who, he, to Venetia Salvador. Which he's going to kill him. They're really trying to get Yanez back in the win column. That was a good. To me, it's almost like a shameless booking. And also, we didn't talk about the the biggest story from this. Yeah. Card. We had a goddamn bite in the <laughs> bite. UFC. We were on Bite Watch a few months it, ago it, for the wrong fight. Oh, an instant cut. Point. Yeah. It, an instant, instant cut. Instant, instant cut. Literally got to the back, and they were like, yeah, keep walking. That's the door. Don't come back. <laughs> One guy got cut. The other guy got the first ever I fucking got bit bonus, and he took it a step further. He goes backstage, uh, Andre Lima, and Dana tells him, I'm going to give you a bonus for getting bit. The first ever I fucking got bit bonus. He goes to a tattoo shop right away, gets the bite mark tattooed onto his bicep with around it. I fucking got bit bonus. Dana says, I'm up in the bonus from 25 to 50 K. He said, yeah, he said, fuck it. You get the whole bonus. Yeah. But also it's such a funny thing. And I don't blame them for saying this in real time because it was hard to tell. But then being like, oh, like, did his mouth get caught? Like, did his arm <laughs> get caught in his in his mouthpiece or something? And then, they sh- and then he shows his arm to the camera and it literally was like cannibalism. And so I don't understand he how he did so that through hard. the mouth guard. I'm so with you. I'm so confused. There, how did he do that? I'm trying to think even back to my football how did days. He not like, break skin? You def- I mean, you definitely can with the bottom. Yeah, but it, it was no so doubt. full. It but was so had, full. Yeah, it was top and bottom and somehow it never broke skin. You're saying blood. Blood, but also because it was his teeth make, were in there deep. But how did he make the teeth marks on the top teeth? I'm think I'm just trying to think. My football days of wearing about like either he must have almost had the mouthpiece almost like half out and like did it almost like in the middle. If that if you, if you get yeah. what I'm saying, yeah, like he almost did it like he mouthpiece kind of like slid out like halfway and then he did it like in there, or if he just got kind of got like a not a like a very worked in mouthpiece and he really just like 
Yeah. Got in there like just with the bottom between the bottom and hurt the, like a mother top of the on the inside of your bicep like that. Did, how did they so bad? How did they notice? He he, he signaled to the ref. He was like, I think he was, I think like, he was yo, he's saying fighting it. me. Like he was saying it, and yeah. then and then he and then yeah, he, uh, who was it? Toniani? I think so. Yeah. He stopped it, and then because everyone the the Felder on them were saying like he was crazy. Yeah. And Toniani was on point. Toniani was like, "What that guy? You bit him, guy. Like yeah. the fight's over." I mean, the second he showed him the bite, he must yeah. Once been he like, lifted up right, his arm, yeah. he was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah. Like, <laughs> it clears. I mean, the guy literally had a mouth guard. And fucking... did you see? I tweeted. I wonder how many times loss biting has been logged on Tapology. Tapology responded twenty five times before Saturday night. It had been logged. Lost biting. That makes sense. Never in the UFC. Okay. That makes sense. Even Dana said that that is like a very like you want out thing to do. I feel like, and it or didn't you make any sense for him to. He wasn't in a position to want out. He wasn't even like I think he was losing, but it was like competitive, was pretty close. So he was. He's twenty years he's old. A prospect like he, this was a guy that, that was, was his on, debut. Yeah, Dana. He was on Dana White's Contender Series, and people were like, "Oh, this guy's pretty good." He was. He was the underdog in that fight, but plus one forty. Dude, he he's the the way he was fighting up to that point. He was the kind of guy that would get like a long leash. Yeah. yeah. Like he was like going for it. Like he's in the pocket trading like a 20 year old. Yeah. Like he's given that guy like a, a lot of chances. Like you're not losing one and getting cut. And literally, he, unless you bite someone. Like you said, he was going <laughs> for it. He was like, going, he like he was, it was yeah. exciting. It was like an exciting fight. Like I just was so surprised what was why going through his mind. Yeah. Like I, that's what I really want to know. Like what he was. I think he was also they're holding his purse, which is wild. He's such a psycho. I think he just he may I not feel have, like you shouldn't get paid. He, he for like that. Bl- he like blacked out. You think he just kind of and I think that's the only logical explanation. I think Dana's just like we can't have that here. No, for sure it's yeah you can't bite. like that's you can't crazy. Bite. You yeah, can't be know. biting people at the highest level and that's insane. But then again, we do work at a place where someone threw a high noon can at at somebody and it was suspended and Dave was like, "Come on back." Yeah, a little different. Yeah, I mean it. But to be fair, I think yeah, I think if Rico bit Big T, I think he's out. Biting's I think so. a little bit different. You're you right. It's like you no, said, no, no. cannibalism. No, no. If 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 he had if the can had landed, he's gone. Yeah. If he punched him in the face, he would have been gone. Yeah, that's true. Um, shout out M Cole in the chat. Going to my first live event this weekend. Pumped. Have fun. No, it's gonna be Get awesome. New Amsterdam. You're going responsibly. Right? No, I'm not. I'm streaming. Uh, I can't go anymore. I was. I've been planning going for months. Duty calls though, but oh. yeah, I'm. Gonna be awesome. I'll be on the stream too. Maybe we'll get the UFC card up, and we can do like a little bit of a. Well, de- it'll definitely be on a TV. Yeah, that's a, that's a non negotiable. <laughs> There's also only two games on it. That the only no, two no, games no. on. Well, for me, it'll be hopefully it'll UConn? be UConn and yeah. then the UFC on, on the Saturday. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Like obviously, San, they have to go through San Diego State, but go Huskies. I got a future on the Huskies oh, a while ago. Let's I, talk about Texas A and M. We had oh, not man. to spend too much time, but we had Texas A and M, and Man, it was so – when he hit that shot, I was like, the we're in this. Like, we're going to win. I was like, we're <laughs> so if you're not aware, we do this, like, bracket busters thing at Barstool every year. Everyone, like, is kind of split up into teams and then assigned – or you pick teams um, from 9 to 16. We had the 20th, 20th second pick. 22nd pick. 22nd pick. We got Texas A&M, which were super high on your and draft. What was, like, the top – was basically my two and Jack's one. Yeah. Um, and it was the better pick because my one got – TCU got smoked. So so we got them. We were feeling good about it. We win the first game easily. It was mm-hmm. never even really, like, close yeah. the, down the stretch. Yep. Then we f- face off against the Houston Cougars. We're good, man. The number two seed. Oh, it was a, and it was a battle the whole game. We're trying a battle. Barely had the lead. We were dead so many times. Dead. <laughs> they were down 12 with under two minutes. They come back. They hit a, a game-winning three or game, game time tying at three, the buzzer sorry, game winning would have been a lot better at the buzzer amazing moment and then i gotta be honest 30 seconds to, into overtime i was like oh we're fucked yeah, yeah. which and to explain for the people if we if they had pulled it off it would have been basically it would not basically it would have been us and another team still in the running for 40k yep and we would have been in we would have been the team that had a much better chance to win the next game than the other team yeah who i think because i think nc state's not, we're not we're talking basketball. I think they're going to get blown out by Marquette, but that's a story for another day. And then, and another show. But if we both lost, then we adopt the team, and, and they would have played, yeah. and they would have played each other. That would have been awesome. So in in, in, the, in this scenario, would have literally been uh, like Duke versus Marquette with us having Duke. Would have been so electric. like to, and just winner, winner take all. Line, yeah, yeah, winner take all. Um, that would have been awesome. But 
we'll uh, next year. Yeah, next yeah, year. We'll be back. We'll be shout back. out uh, Dave and Busters. Shout out Dave and Busters. Shout out Bracket Busters. All of that. All right, let's get into the Atlantic City card. We got a lot of else? fights to talk about. I'll take just the the was just we mentioned the Newark the three hundred two fights. Uh, Fluffy versus Roman Delize got booked. I like that. I yeah, love that fight. That fight. that's a fascinating matchup. Because just just how well Roman can grapple, yeah. that's like a fascinating. I'm and Fluffy's been unbelievable. So. I think they're kind of like Fluffy. Okay, do this, and then if you do this, then it's like oh, dude, if Fluffy, if especially if he fin- if he if he tapped Delize, then it's like he's getting a huge fight, and then it's like big time fight. Fluffy's like. Like, I don't know. He like might be, run. He might, if he, be, if he taps, if he just beats Salidze like handily, even if it's not like a submission, if he beats Salidze like significantly, he's like potentially one away from like an, either an eliminator or that division can, and now it's different a little bit because it's trade hands some, but he's probably like one away Imagine from like a, see, from like, like an eliminator. Like a DDP versus Fluffy fight, like down the line. Dude, that'd be insane. If he wins this one, he's probably. Yeah, I think he's one away from like a title eliminator or maybe a shot. Also, he's so I think there's been a lot of stars that have come out of nowhere in the UFC. Fluffy has such a great like he's easy to sell. He has all those tattoos. Mm-hmm. He seems like just a chill guy. He goes in there. It's like, oh, like you can try to punch, like punch my head off for a round, but then I'm just going to get you. Like, yeah, I don't care. He's kind of the boogeyman in a way. He's awesome. I think he has a great attitude. I would love to see a little bit more social media content from him because I think he could be like a, a big time star. He'd also be someone that I'd love to see. Like, I wonder to see, I don't know if they would do this, but it'd be fascinating. And I, I'll give, cause I've heard magic say it a couple of times. If they ever, if the Bo nickel fight in him, I think would make a lot of sense at some point. And yeah, we're so close to 300. Did we forget that's, this is the that, last that's, card before that's why, that's why it came in my head. Like Bo Nichols fighting in like two weeks, 300 Eve, basically. Like he's fighting very soon. So I just think that's or, Brundage. Oh, man. Like yeah, shout that's, out PC Strickland said he's going to the newer card. We'll see you there. We'll meet yeah, up. absolutely. Shout out PC Strickland. And, yeah. And uh, chat about Jared, uh, Almeida versus Volkov. Yep. I like that matchup. It's very because I mean, Almeida, he Volkov's like been like wrestling has been a problem for him with some people. Yeah. But then he's done it. So I'm just very like that's a, I think that's a good fight for Almeida to get potentially get back on track. 100 percent But also, also I would never count out Volkov. Adams wants comment here from you, Jack. He says, any comment about your boy Colby throwing out fake news about your other dude Strickland? All right. So if, if you didn't know, Colby said he's under investigation for pistol whipping someone in Vegas. Yeah. Uh we'll have to let the facts come out. Uh Colby. Yeah, I'm still I'm still in Colby's corner. We need that Ian Gary fight. That's that's what I'm focused on. And then Strickland, Strickland, Strickland has had a tough few weeks. Yeah, where he's he goes, he's gotten quote tweeted a few times. Since <laughs> yeah, and he, the the video where he was like, guys, like I I have all the money in the world, um, and my mental health still sucks. It's like, oh, it's nice that he's being honest, but then everyone's like. You said like the same like you, <laughs> you said called pretty a little round things. tree so pussy for a bit like talking about his mental for health. saying basically the same, same thing, thing. Yeah. yeah 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 so that was kind of tough uh that was tough well, i've had a tough ever since 296 it's been tough uh running tough time for, for colby for, and, yeah, and sean your guys even though i think sean won that fight you need islam back asap if he's a Newark man, we will be. <laughs> That's that the, they're saying him poor yet. It'd be huge. And it makes it, it makes all the sense. I'll be in every Starbucks around me. <laughs> just looking for I was him. Gonna say, what do you think they'll think of Newark? Run into Umar. Umar, yeah. M- maybe Umar gets on that card too, maybe. That'd be good. Against Corey? That'd be awesome. That was like the co main. Yeah. That That'd or really cool. even not or just on the main card. That'd be yeah. awesome. There'd be some maybe we got oh wait, never mind. I was gonna say maybe for Vola, but for Vola's fighting soon. In St. Louis. He's fighting, yeah. He's yeah. fighting a little, yeah, yeah. Um, all right, let's get into the Atlantic City card. We kick things off with uh, an Irishman, Callan Lawfren versus Angel Pacheco. Um, it is funny for me. We've seen Lawfren one time. He fought Lapalus in the UFC. Yeah, yeah. Started started civil war. It was in, the, in, in France. Yep, we started a war. He lost that fight. It's funny for me to see his picture though, and see he's got like a half sleeve on the exact same arm that McGregor's got a half sleeve, knowing <laughs> he's twenty seven years old and like came up in the McGregor's yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. best era. It's interesting. A lot of Irish fighters have that. I mean, how almost how could they not? I mean, everyone's yeah. in, <laughs> Ian Gary literally just like it's like how like bar for bar. Every UF or every European like football player that's trying to be David Beckham gets the neck tattoo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, and it's it goes to yeah. Every Brazilian guy is going to come up with the bleach blonde hair. Like yeah. I mean, it keeps keeps going down. I think Lochran, uh This is I think they kind of like him as a heel, and they want to get him a win here. He's a huge um, favorite. He's huge like favorite. minus three sixty. Minus three sixty. Pacheco and didn't he lose in the contender series? I think so. Um, this is a this is a fascinating matchup. I think Lochran takes care of business. May even find a finish early in the card. He goes for it. He showed du durability against Laplace, who's actually not that bad. Laplace performed pretty well against. Yeah, uh, we saw him recently. He's a good record. I mean, he hasn't lost many fights. And and I think this guy this guy always has something to say, which I think the UFC likes. He's kind of a heel. He, he loves getting in the mix, getting in the mud. I think Lochran takes care of business. Good first fight, though. I think these two guys are going to throw down. I you, liked him a lot. Last you time. know, I would say this. I, I like Lagrin to win. It probably won't be like a bet. He's just a huge favorite. It just, just principally someone that's like I don't think is like great and just that big of a favorite. Stay away. But I'm, de I'm definitely think he wins. And I agree with the, the heel thing. Like I think they're probably oh, just trying yeah. to set him up to get a dub. Yeah, that was great last time. Yeah, Everything yeah. about talk the way shit. Send him back to himself. France. Yeah, he just goes to France to flip yeah. everyone off again in yep. September. Um, then we've got Andre Petrosky versus Jacob Malkoon. Malkoon's a minus. On the UFC website, this is minus 205 on DraftKings. He's, he's minus. Yeah, he's one of like 238. Two, 238. Malkoon yeah. all day. I mean, I, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think Malkoon's got him. I think he's better striking. Would you I lay think that? Better cardio. Yeah. yeah. Better striking, better cardio. He gets it down in, inside the distance. I will say, Petrosky, I mean, the price isn't going to be great here, but like round two, round three, Malkoon's going to be like, I mean, I feel like it's all day. Yeah. Petrosky kind of does yep. uh, gas a little bit. We've seen him even win fights where he gassed the one at MSG. Um, where he was like literally dying, so yeah. found a way to win. Um, I thought the GM three. I thought GM three could have even got the yeah. nod. Like he was, and he and Petro and Petrovsky lands some big shots. And I think Malkoon's a lot more, like way more durable than than like GM three and guys like that. Hundred percent. Oh yeah. So uh, yeah, Evan and I are on the same page. Malkoon all day. I think minus yeah. two thirty eight. You're still. He should be up in like three hundred range. Yeah. Petrovsky. I mean, like you never know. He could get like a good choke or whatnot. But I think Malkoon's just very very good. Yeah. Uh, the next fight is Victoria Dudakova versus Melissa Gatto. Dudakova is plus 140. Gatto is minus 166. Would you take a shot on Dudakova here? I'm curious, Jack Max, because I'm, I was, this is when I have to feel like I don't have a great feel for because I think, I think Gatto is like better. Like she's fought way better competition. Uh, her striking should be better. But Dudakova, she's kind of, it's, she's a tough read right now because I think she just beat up a lot of tomato cans. Yeah. So I'm kind of curious, and I think Gatto is. De I definitely don't think Gatto's a tomato can. I think she's like decent. So I kind of, I would say no feel. I would say if I had to pick it, I'd pick Gatto. I'd, I'd lean. I trust with the, the competition edge and those kind of things. Dude, Kova is such a. She's gonna go for the takedowns and Gatto. I need to look more into like her takedown defense and then how she does on the ground. I think she's decent at both. She got the long, like snappy strikes. Like I in that realm, she definitely should be better, I think. But and I so think she's got sixty four percent takedown defense. All right, so I mean, I those well, I'll take a look at those who took her down, who didn't, who tried to. Uh, due to Kova, here's the thing: I feel like she's somebody that, like, if she starts getting that like jab to death, she may just like mm -hmm. be useless. Uh, so I think it's a fair line, to be honest. I don't have a play on it yet. I should look into it more, though. Everything that Ab said, I agree with. It is one of those. But it, then again, it's like it, based on what you said, minus 160 makes sense. Yeah, it's, I, that's why I'm kind of like, I probably won't play it. I would play Gatto if I had to. Um, what do we got next? What do we got next here? The Pleasure Man. Oh, this yeah. is the, the Pleasure Man makes his return to the UFC against Ibu Aslan. Um, Ibu is actually the favorite here, minus 130. Is that how that line started or no? The pleasure uh, man always a uh, plus one ten, like uh, an underdog in this. I'm fight? trying. I'm actually not sure to be honest. I seems like the Ebo, Ebo's a uh, he's a contender series guy from like this most recent one. Like, yeah. This is his debut, right in the UFC. Mm -hmm. He's got some, he's got a lot of knockout power. I mean, that's kind of what that's what Pedro did to him. Uh, the pleasure man. I I'll go with Aslan. I'll go with Ebo. Um, it's just one of those. I, the, some there's some guys of the contender series that I'm just very like can be like hesitant with because you just like don't you kind of just don't know yeah but i would go i'll go aslan do you like the pleasure man here a little bit but you know this i i gotta say what a great nickname for evo Aslan. he's quote unquote the last ottoman 
Oh, that is yeah, good. That's good. That's really good. Uh, he's coming off uh, the contender series when he, he goes, here's the thing, like, can the pleasure man <laughs> like pleasure him early and then take him into deep <laughs> no, waters? Can't Yo, say that. pause. Don't pause. Say that, bro. Pause. Can he pleasure him early? <laughs> <Can he> pleasure <laughs> wild. Nah, it's the pleasure man, bro. <laughs> oh, that was wild. Um, oh, MPI giving some good that they fought in 2020. Oh, yeah, they did. I think and, this and is pleasure a man, And the pleasure man won by finish, but we're going to show. Up. And brave, to see, and brave. Uh, Thank you, MPI. Uh, this is a rematch. Uh, looking at Ebos, uh, the last Ottomans, round one, round one finish, round one finish, round one, round one finish. Mm -hmm. Every time he's gone, he's fought since his loss to the pleasure man, Anton Turkosh. He's only been in one round fights. Uh, what round was the choke in? Round two. And there's a little, little round two, round three on. Mm -hmm. Anton, that's what I'm saying. I hate that. Pleasure early, and then we we cash late. This maybe maybe funny. a live entry if he gets. Pleasure man, going to make sure there's no Ottomans after yep. Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Um, up next, we've got oh Bazooka, Dennis Bazooka yep. versus Connor Matthews. I can't quit Den Dennis Bazooka. I can't. Neither I can I. Name. Yeah, it's the name. It's the Longo. fact that he's a Longo guy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I just feel compelled. I can't bet him every time outside of when he fought. I think Sean Woodson. That was his He's day. Minus one twenty-five. Actually, thought Sean too. Woodson was like the one he didn't do. Like, like I mean, the last one, he Emmers just knocked him out in the first yeah, minute. It was, was really bad. fast. It, it was an MSG, right? It was brutal. Yeah, it was early. It was one of the first fights of the night. He got smoked like yeah, almost immediately. I this is another one where Connor Matthews fought a contender series and lost a like good fight to Francis Marshall, our guy who we had in pseudo. Yep. Good guy, the fire marshal, and Fran and Francis Marshall's. And I think it's and I'm almost doing some like doubling, deep, getting deep in the not MMA math, but Francis Marshall. I think is he, that's fights aged like weird because I think Marshall's had he. I mean, knocked out Rojo like right away, mm -hmm. but he's fought some like really good guys since then, and I think it's kind of like I'm actually curious to see who he gets next. Maybe he probably gets on that newer card, hopefully. Um, but he's fought some good guys since and has lost, but I don't think I think he's better than maybe. People would think from those performances. Um, Connor Matthews, he was all he was on the most recent looking for a fight and got back in. Like he had a good win. Um, I think it was in Boston when they did that Colin Walsh thing. Yeah. And Connor Matthews got back in. Obviously, this is his first fight since. I, I'm, I almost kind of want to lean. I'm kind of leaning Matthews. I'm like debating oh, if I'm going to actually get there or not. Um, Bazooka, he's let me down a little bit. But I don't know if this is such a step down for Bazooka that this is like a. There's a bit of overrating Bazooka for where he trains, but here's the thing: he does train there, and we know that there it's a great gym. Um, Constantly scrapping, scrapping with the steamroller. Yeah, so you know Bazooka. I don't have a bet on it yet. I think I'll probably end up on Bazooka because I can't quit him. This is also one of those a lot of pressure on Bazooka here. Oh it's my like, god, this is, yeah, because this, this has got to be like win. do or die. Yeah, and Matthews, win. I don't feel it's that way. No. Like I think Matthew, I, Matthews shot, loses, no he gets another yeah. fight. Like Bazooka, this is like if he loses this fight, I think he's he's out. Also, uh, my slip of the tongue there. I must have scrapping before. That could be a new thing. It's like a good scrap, but it's, it's just good grappling. grappling. It's good scrappling. Right grappling. I like, it's like a new name for a, a scramble. It's like Actually, oh shit, they were scrappling. The new pause. The new pause. No. No, no diddy. diddy. No diddy. Oh. No diddy. The guy oh, who man. came up with it trademarked it already. Yeah, really? Yeah, he filed it. Do you know who that is? What was his name? Uh, I don't know. He's I like a rap, like a he's a rap, he's known rapper, but not like that. Big. Yeah, I I like no seen him. I think on funny. Instagram maybe, but yeah. No diddy. No diddy. Good. I mean, that's catchy too. Like it's good, right? No diddy rolls off no the tongue. No um. All right. Hammer spot here. Don't tell me on Herbert Burns. No, Herbert oh, okay. Burns. Is dead, <laughs> okay, uh, okay. Herbert Burns. Uh, is this the first time we've seen Herbert Burns since he was carried out of uh, out of the octagon by his brother? It might be. We first watched since we 2022, watched... yeah, yeah, against Bill Algeo. No, yeah. we were there. It was on yeah, Long he Island. Got knocked out. Yeah, and he it got. Was. It, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. Was on the photo, Gilbert was. Yeah, speak Bill Algeo, another guy later in this card. I yeah. like a lot. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. It's interesting. Who they are saying just gonna like anything he wants. This is our so thing. you said it's a hammer player. Like, what are you betting him here? Because inside, he's like minus four hundred distance. I'll put him in parlays. Herbert Burns is not winning again in the UFC unless no, he fights. He's he's not a good fighter. Someone posted, and it's another fight we'll get to later. Him hitting Nate Nate the train with that knee it's, is one of the biggest flukes in UFC history ever. <laughs> like Nate Landwehr is so much better than him. Yeah, he was feeling himself. 
and just got stupid and got hit with yeah. the craziest knee of Another all. Another guy it, fighting on this card. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Got hit with an insane knee. It's the biggest meme ever. Such a yeah. meme fluke ending. Her, they fight ten times. Nate Wayne, where knocks probably knocks him out in nine of them. Yeah. Or finishes him. Yeah, Herbert. I didn't even realize until I was prepping for this card. I thought he was out of the UFC. Crazy hasn't fought since then. But yeah, no, I I agree with you. Another hammer play coming yeah, up. Fun, Holy also awesome. shout out trains uh, Shane Burgos guy. Oh, they train together. Yeah, they train. Yeah, it's like him, like Trezano. Oh, that's right. He told us that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ars, Julio Ars, one of his like he trains with him a lot. Um. Oh, and then we've got Jandaroba versus uh, Lupita, Loopy, Loopy all day, Loopy, 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 Loopy. Hmm. She's minus two hundred five. I like don't care. I don't care. Loopy, money Verna, on? Verna, very handsome. She's very handsome. Wait, <laughs> Verna. I got no dis. I have no disrespect towards Verna. I actually think she's decent. But Loopy all day. I love Loopy. She's only let me down once, and that's when she went up and weighed, and like it was just a, it was a really dumb decision. Loopy just takes care of business. Yeah, you don't seem as confident. I I was way. very I was kind of torn because Verna like maybe the the Marina Rodriguez win is kind of like throwing me, like it's a good win, but yeah. I get but it, but stylistically it was probably a much better matchup for her than than Loopy is. Loopy's just gonna take her down. Yeah, she should. She should. You're probably right. I I probably like needed to hear that because I, <laughs> I was looking at the plus one seventy. And I was like, Verna plus one seventy. <laughs> I mean, and, and I think you want to know this for me too. Sometimes I get caught up on. I bet her pretty big against Marina, and she was a big dog, and she won. Mm. And like so when that, that like, gets in my mind, yeah. like I get, I'm like, oh, like she made she me money, money so before, like, yeah. As a, like she was similar price, like a one seventy and one like pretty handily. But you're probably right. And Younger, then, better. Uh, I love this fight to headline the prelims. Nate the Train, Nate Landwehr versus Jamal oh Emmers. Oh we God. do with this. You can get Nate the Train at plus one eighty on DraftKings right now. I feel like if you can get Nate the Train at plus one eighty against you know against Jamal Emmers, who isn't a world beater, he's a very good fighter for sure. But he's, I like Nate the Train. You know, I it's funny because I I love Nate so much, and I came into this thinking I was gonna like Emmers more. And when I like looked into deeper, like like uh, watched like a few like a few of their last few fights, like who they fought. I think I'm gonna take Nate at plus one. I think I'm I gonna. Like I think him. I'm going to. I do because Emmers. I was. I went into it thinking I was gonna really like Emmers a lot more, and then more, watch. I was like, he kind of he clipped Bazooka. Yeah. He like. I mean, er, like really early. Who I don't think is like the greatest win ever. And some of his other ones were um, like weren't. I don't know why I'm just drawing a blank now. Who the who we fought right before that that I wasn't like super impressive like. Jack Jenkins. Yeah, like he, he lost to Jenkins. Ashkabov and I remember he won. And I remember that. even I bet Emmers and I thought he won. Or no, he beat Ashkabov. And even like that, I don't think that's like that great. Like I am like the I lost to Pat Savage. E even the the yeah, the fight with Jenkins, like I, even the fact that he even was like that close, like that he and I, I remember I thought Emmers totally won. But uh that even that one fight with Jenkins was very like uh like performance. So I think I've got to take a shot at Nate. Yeah. You got a highlight reel like Evil Knievel, but swagger like Elvis Presley, and I'll be damned if I enhance him. One of my favorite <laughs> quotes in the history of the UFC. I'm a fan of Emmers, but it's tough. I can't go against Nate the Train. I went against him ever since I watched that fight. He had one of the first fights back in COVID against Darren Elkins. Yep. Oh, yeah. And, and yep. that was such a great the damage. Fight. Yep. And Nate, Nate put on a show. So did Darren Elkins. Shout out Darren Elkins, one of the greatest of all time. Legend. Um, round and, three king. Round yeah. three king. And then... <laughs> and then for for Nate, Nate just Nate, Nate's a game. Like if you think about a guy you want to bet on as an underdog, Nate the Train is it. He goes for it. He finds ways to get it done. You either want Nate the Train or you want a Sahabi, the guy who's like so technical. He finds a way to like uh, like squeak or like out a GM split. three. GM three, yeah, yeah, yeah. GM, he he could lose ninety five percent of a fight and win in the last five test seconds. I I mean just I mean that Onama fight is just will be like forever etched in my memory. Of him literally just dominating and then literally like let being like getting off of him and letting him up like like let's scrap yeah like just even with with a man who hits way harder than him yeah and all has all those like has all the physical advantages yeah and he's like you know I'll let you up <laughs> I'm on top of you beating the shit out of you and then on to the main uh, card six fight main card this time which is sweet this card I saw somebody complaining about it it's like here's the thing MMA fans. We complain when there's no – next weekend people will complain there's no UFC. There'll be yep. memes. It's like, what are you doing when there's no UFC on? They should watch then, real fighting like WrestleMania. Yes. Fast. <laughs> and then uh, then 
there's apex cards like oh are they apex again it's like another apex card and then they go to atlantic city and they're like this card stinks remember back in 2007 when it was on <laughs> spike tv it's like guys shut up enjoy the fights i know you're just gonna we'll clip this out and you'll call me a bootlegger but i don't care like this card's this card's stack. they're great it's great matchups yeah which is yeah. what they which i would have noticed what they really try to do with like these fight with these like live event fight nights like at locations they even if like you can't always have the best name value when you have all these pay reviews, mm -hmm. but they have like like when you just look up like matchup for matchup, like they're all like really good fights. They're interesting. Like yeah. you're getting like you, this first fight we're at a talk like Chidi versus Reese McKee is gonna be a fucking banger. That's a, yeah, absolutely There's like gonna, someone fight someone's night getting someone's over. getting knocked out, or it's gonna be like a three round absolute like war where Chidi's dying at the end and Reese is like <laughs> pouring it on. Yeah. Cheney's the favorite in that fight. He's like minus 150 on DraftKings, minus 148. Um, also, I apologize. There's UFC next weekend. But you know what? I, yeah, you got my sentiment. Yeah, the Brendan Allen, Vittori. But yeah, True, I know, I know yeah. it's not Vittori anymore. Chris Curtis, Curtis. that's right. But La that'll be the last card before 300. Yeah. But it's on during WrestleMania, so I won't be watching. I'll be at WrestleMania. Um, during March, Matt, during the Final Four, too. Yeah, but I'll be watching it's, both. It's tough. Reese McKee all day. Yes, talk to me nice, Jack. Yep. This is Plus also yeah. we're taking some round two, round three in here too. Yeah. Just we're taking we're cheating. taking if he dies, he dies. But Reese McKee is gonna find a way not to die. And he's he's Reese McKee is durable. Yes, he will take a beating, but he will like he will come back and and Cheedy is like I like Cheedy. He he could just bonk you early, but I mean, I he will fade, and he will hurt you and then get hurt and he will. I don't want to call him a quitter, but like he, I'll say respectfully, he will he will he'll, he'll kind of quit. Yeah, he will he'll melt like and, and Reese McKee is a guy who, who can melt you even in the um, we've seen Chidi. That's not even disrespectful. We've seen him melt multiple times. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm to to Robocop to uh, Ola Jake to Ola Jake. Yeah, to Michael to Michelle Michael. Whatever the fuck you said M-A-C-H-I-L. Yeah, whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> like we've seen him like and hurt those guys and then like be badly hurt. And, and Reese McKee is a guy who can take that beating and then come back and and have like a huge third round yeah um the next fight bill algio versus kyle nelson algio's minus 238 when i initially saw this fight i thought ooh, like maybe get a good price on him that seems steep but i i do think he's gonna win the fight i think algio's way better yeah i think uh like kyle nelson's being overrated i know he he picked up that victory uh decision over padilla to be honest, I think Padilla has his issues, and if you extend him late, he's not going to be a guy that's going to really uh, shine, and Kyle Nelson took advantage of that. Now you're against Bill Algio, who I just think so, like a significantly better, and I think he takes care of business. Um, Kyle Nelson, I mean, he's, he's a good fighter. No disrespect to him, but I'll, I'll be on Algio here. Um, I don't know. I'll probably just have him maybe even a straight bet. I'll have him in a parlay or two. We'll see. Yeah, definitely a parlay piece at, at worst. He, yeah, I mean, he, I agree. Kyle Nelson, he won, he's won a couple of fights now after he was like, after he'd lost a bunch in a row. And yeah, it's, I just, Padilla fought that fight stupid. Yeah, it was, an, yeah. I like, he, he fought, he fought Kyle Nelson's fight. He fought it the way exactly Kyle Nelson wanted him to fight it. Um, yeah. And yeah, going off of chat, the McKee thing, yeah, that, I was going to just say what Johnny Drama said. He lost, he literally fought Hems at on like, super short notice lost and then was out of the ufc they went to cage warriors down and cage Warriors and and beat and won the belt the cage Warriors over justin burlinson yeah. who was like this crazy prospect and he then he came back lost to angelusa in a really good fight like Would, really good and by fight. the way angelusa is good he is good he went to decision with jdm in yeah. his contender series another guy like just caught a guy kind of the wrong time yeah i think he's like just keep him around uh hot billy absolutely one of you the most outrageous comments you've ever left um uh, i caught that and i and i i enjoyed it, it feel funny. bad for jamal hill. and i love jamal hill but that was, was funny he was funny. supposed to walk him out funny is funny is funny we're this is jamal hill stand podcast but yeah, we do love jamal funny hill. funny Bro, is he's funny. never been in the pool okay <laughs> he has <laughs> um nurse sultan ruzibov 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 Versus Cedric Dumas. Oh, that's Cedric. Cedricus. Cedricus. He's plus two hundred five. You guys like him? I don't. Oh, it's tough. Ruzibov. I, li I I like him, but I don't know if I like Not him in this that fight. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Ruzibov. We don't really know that much about, and Dumas isn't bad, but 
I think the the line is like it's it's a Dumas bet line. Like you should probably take him. Probably. Dumas I, I, finding to, to, a way to like win this, this and be like so finish funny. it would be just like scenes. Like it would just be unbelievable. Because <laughs> I Rhodes up, he, he knocked out Bruno Ferreira. Yeah. Early in that fight, and he also and he has a he's one he has a lot of experience. Like he's fought a lot. Yeah. I think he's I almost think he's like, fifth, almost fifty pro fights. Like 34, 35. He literally made his debut and he was like thirty five and like eight or something like that. <laughs> What's his record? Do you have it on hand? It was like thirty three and eight. Yeah, yeah. Like so that's yeah. So he's like or he's thirty four and eight now. Oh, he's thirty now. But he's thirty three and eight. He's thirty yeah. years old. That's the thing. He's not not so old. He's fought a lot, a lot of pro fights. I definitely. You're asking me to if I'm asking me to pick the fight. I do think he wins, but I'll I'll be rooting for Dumas. Maybe even like a respect, like maybe even a, a sprinkle on the money line as a respect play, just Fair so enough. I can like root for him. Like honestly, <laughs> root for him. But yeah, I think he. I think Ruzwa probably gets it done. This next one is uh, similar for me. I feel like. In that <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Do you know Ruzabov's fighter nickname? No. Black. Black? Just black. What a matchup. <laughs> what, a matchup. <laughs> what a matchup. Wow. It's just Nurseltone, Black, Ruzabov. <laughs> also, also uh, Dumas got literally got like arrested yeah. but like in between this. You got it like, I think like two months ago. Yeah. In like February. I think, but but I honestly, th- I honestly think I like that's better. Like helps him. That's like respectfully, like normal. No, Dumas, like he's been in, like I think, like he kind of like I think that's like Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. I think I think he's been in some trouble before. He, he was uh, arrested Tuesday on a charge of battery in Florida. Not this Tuesday, February. And in 13th. Florida, that's like you know Jay Walking. Also, I mean, your UFC fighter, like a little. Yeah, battery charges. It just come. It kind of just comes with the territory. Yeah, practice. I do believe he's fighting it. Um, this Dumas is, has a lengthy criminal history. That's what I'm saying. He's kind of like this is not like out of the norm. I'm not I, <laughs> Dumas. I ain't saying a thing, bro. No, like, I, I, no this is someone who also has had uh, some run-ins with the law. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I we're in the same. There's a mugshot of me out there, brother. I love Dumas. Um, Chris Weidman versus Bruno Silva. I feel. I guess similar to how you feel in the last fight where you're like, you almost want to put a respect sprinkle. Like I love Weidman, one of my all time favorite fighters. You almost want to just lay a little something on him there. I worry. I worry about Weidman a lot in this fight. I don't think it's the greatest matchup for him. Um, He was on Ariel's show this week and there was a funny clip of Ariel being like, you know, you're not so great in the Northeast. Like, are you worried about this? And he's like, you could see him start to think about it. He's like, oh, you bastard. He's like, I might have to cancel this fucking fight. <laughs> um, but yeah. Well, didn't he say he's 5-0 and in Atlantic City? I mean, that's it, a great stat. Did he, I, I could have sworn I saw a clip because because when he was like uh, in like combat FC yeah. and all that, that, all those fights are in AC. Yeah, that's great. He, so, so I think lost he, a couple times in MSG in Buffalo. I was just there in Boston. In Boston, he lost, yeah. yeah, twice. He but lost he, in, he went in AC is like his home. Let's pray that he goes six and zero. Oh. I would love for Weidman to at least just get one more win under his belt before he rides off into the sunset. I, I want to say this very. We had him in the office and he was awesome. Yeah, gave him a tour after him and Anthony yeah. Smith were great. They were drinking. I think I think Silva probably gets a finish here. Maybe know. not. Maybe not a finish. But I, I want to see that man. I I'm worried. I'm worried about. Uh, I'm worried about him in this fight. The only thing is, we know. I mean, sh- shout out New York, shout out New Jersey, shout out you know the metro area. His wrestling's pretty good. He's got good grappling. Bruno Silva's issue has always been it's true. Oh, and seven. Well, wrestling's great. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I mean to be disrespectful. Yeah, it's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. If he can get it going, Bruno Silva's been subbed seven times in his career. He, Silva's never subbed anybody. He's 0 7 to his sub. Okay. Think about it. Talk me into it. Talk oh, me into it. Also, I like that. Talk me into it. Also, think about it. Okay. This fight came out of nowhere, like last week. The UFC was like, hey, we know you want to go out on a win. It had been booked before that. Oh, it had been? It's been booked for a while. So I think the UFC wants to give Weidman, and we've seen it. They have him on their shows. I think they want to give Weidman one last oh, win. Of course. And Weidman, even though he says he wants to like go on another title run, I think he knows it's like that's probably not going to happen. I could see it now. He sub Silva. The crowd goes crazy. He goes, "Hey guys, thank you for everything. I'm going to give this media thing a full a full run. Thank you for everything. This was amazing. The ride of a lifetime." 
he cashes the sub ticket and we're all going crazy like chris Weidman. he's goes still out on my top. boy his dad in the back. yeah he, okay he goes <laughs> yeah, out talk on top. me into it now here's the thing talk me into it he may be flat on that canvas too uh, oh. after, uh, Bruno Silva, but <laughs> that's that's what i'm worried that's what i'm very worried yeah. about get the grapple and the wrestling going early we could see it because i think they're people are going to see his last fight and they're, they're going to be like kick those motherfucking legs yeah and I hate to see that because it was tough when uh, Tavares was just beating both legs to death. Yeah, literally fractured his his good leg. His good leg, yeah. So that I just I just really hope we don't see that again for Weidman State because I'm a huge fan and he was he was great in here. Um, then we've got Vicente Luque, who's originally scheduled to you know headline this in a different fight against Joaquin Buckley. Um, Luque minus one fifteen, Buckley minus one hundred five. Basically, a pick 'em fight. You're almost there. I wanna, I wanna go Luke in this fight. I don't know if it's just the jersey in me, just the shout out Westwood, um, but I, I really don't have like a, I don't have like a read on this. I just kind of edge Luke. Robbie, I kind of feel the same way as you. Yeah, I'm just a big Luke guy. I've been a big Luke guy. I, I definitely think he can win, and I just don't know how. His last fight was the was the RDA fight. I was him moving up. Mm-hmm. It was he won and looked good, but like. A lot of grappling, a lot of like used a lot of the size advantages he had. I don't think he has those kind of size advantages here. I, I, in fact, I know he doesn't. No, yeah, he um, I'm I'm worried about. He had a great shin for so long. He's oh he's always been very hittable to some degree. Um, I'm worried about him. I'll be rooting for him. I, I really like want to bet on him, and I'm I'm uh but I'm I'm worried, and I'm it's get Buckley hard hitter down in weight now and i think he, he, his rightful weight class at 170 yep so i'm i'll be rooting for, i'll be rooting for luke K. i'm not sure if i'm gonna bet it or not i guess i'll pick luke K out of like respect i'm worried though a lot of concerns so i was so big on rda going into that fight and then luke K really impressed me buckley's kind of a guy that's he's he's good we kind of know who he is now the chin concern is an issue but rda still hits hard and we saw RDA hit hard. Like, I mean, he 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 knocked down Gamrod in that last fight. Yeah. Yeah. It's and true. so it's like, it's and true. he kind of ate those. So maybe I keep going back and forth because I've seen some people I respect on Buckley. Uh, me, but this me too. Line That's what I'm is like, almost at this point, it's like, it's like a pick them basically. Yeah. It's like, I, I get getting taking Buckley at plus 115, plus 110, now minus one. I don't know. I may, I'm almost at the point now where it's like maybe Luke has a little bit of value. Yeah. I just, I, it's, like I think Luke is so much more like well rounded, but he's just so much older, and I guess he's hittable. And I it's this it's like this is like the level of competition where like I'm it's very I'm just very like torn like does he still like does he still having to beat like a young guy like a younger probably at this point more athletic guy like that. That's another thing the athleticism there's a big age gap I think, um, or maybe Buckley may be a little bit older than we are. He's I, like fight younger regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Buckley is 29. Yeah, so oh. how, how old is he look at? Like 33, 34? He is 32. So it's only... Uh, I knew I knew he wasn't as old. Yeah. I knew he wasn't super old, like, fight. Like, he wasn't as old as probably his experience. And, and Buckley's that. about to be 30. He's uh he's 29 plus 11 months, three days. Topology's new. Go. Shout out to Topology's new uh, layout on their website. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. They have this, like, little thing when you go on their website to the cart. Like there's a good this little tail of the tape. There's a little press. You press the uh, like a plus, and then it gives you yeah betting odds, age at fight, latest weight, height, reach, and gives you a great look. And both these guys, Buckley's uh, reach has always been an advantage to him, but Luke's reach is the same, mm. seventy six inches. Yep. I'm kind of like almost at the point where I'm like, maybe it's one of those. If I'm having a good card and this isn't the greatest way to bet, you should really put your bets in before and be like, these are my bets. No adding. But if I'm having a good card, maybe it's like, all right, Co-Main, I like Luke here. I don't think I'm going to bet Buckley. Something feels off about mm-hmm. it in, in inside of me. <laughs> yeah, and I would, and you know, I just, I'm just such a Luke fan. There's that part of me that, like, if I bet Buckley and then Luke wins, I'll be like, like, what do you like? You knew better, yeah. like, yeah. So that like, that's I kind of I'm kind of the same spot as you. Like, I'll probably I probably bet Luke like 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 small like a one unit. And here's the thing: I really would have liked Luke against Ian Gary. And I thought that was a great spot for him. And now it's like, oh, it's against Joaquin Buckley. Like, why? Like, why is well? Why well it was supposed to be Sean Brady. Yeah, yeah, but wasn't he supposed to fight 
I think he Gary no, I think, I think either at one point, I think he was. Yeah, I think you're right. No, you're right. You're right. He was. I was going to bet Luke. He Harris. was supposed to at one yeah, point. Plus 180. And I was like, and I mean, I don't know. I, Sean Brady, I would have loved Sean Brady here. I'm just a big Sean Brady guy. But that's like where my mind is at from the perspective of I loved him against Ian Gary. I feel like Ian Gary just styles on Joaquin Buckley. I think so too. And then it's even what's my hesitancy mm-hmm. but the hesitancy there are valid reasons the the chin ex- issue expo- explosiveness power explos- explosiveness. power uh, the, there was the brain issue that he was recovering from like you, you could see buckley just uh shutting off the lights and and, and M- mpi love loves uh loves luca i don't blame him i don't blame the the belief in him because there's part of it's like even even his chin like his chin getting checked was after taking so many shots from jeff neal who hits like a fucking truck and had to get hit like over and over and over. And then got like, he got slept pretty bad, like face planted. But I mean, he took a lot of punishment. Yeah. And then the main event, the, uh, you know, not the original main event, but now the main event, Aaron Blanchfield, New Jersey's own takes on Furio. Um, Blanchfield minus 180, Furio plus 150. Okay. I don't know who you like. I don't know who you are. I'm, I have like a decent. I I I have closed my eyes and I see how this fight's going. God, you go first. I think Aaron's just like so much more athletic. I think she's hmm. going to take her down and stop her. That's what I see as well. I think Aaron dominates this fight. I I I know Lee likes Fior. I kind of Fior Fior Furio Fior Fior. I think it's Fior. we know who we're talking about. I kind of like Fior. That's good. I love. What I'm you I'm very like. Ble- Blanchfield, listen, if Blanchfield, I think she's great. So, like, if, I, if Blanchfield did just take her down and sub her, I'd be like, damn, like, give her the next title shot. Like, she, but Fior, there's, Fior is never lost in this weight class, ever. She has one loss ever. It was her debut against Leah McCourt at 138. Oh, my God. It's weird. Her, yeah. And it was a split. Yeah. Against Leah McCourt, who was huge. Yep. And is good. It's like, pretty yeah, good. Leah's good, yeah. Her first fight ever. Has not lost since. So obviously, undefeated in the UFC. Has beat some good competition in the UFC. Just beat Rose. Um, beat Mario Bueno Silva. Uh, bueno Gomez. Or not Bueno Silva. I mean Bueno Silva. Um, who obviously just fought for the 135 belt. Um, I think Fior is really good. And I think if Blan- in Blanchfield. Though our, I'll bring up John Drama said I was going to get her win against Talia Santos. So that was very impressive. Um, I bet Santos pretty big in that fight. I actually thought Santos basically like had like kind of fumbled it. She, he, he, he it was even like won. ten in the morning. I was yelling at my TV. Yeah, like Santos, she fumbled. I thought in Santos. Singapore. I thought Santos like should have won the fight. Like she, I think she could have won and like should have won. She's not in the UFC. Yeah, crazy. She's a PFL. PFL. Yep. She's gonna. Ugh, she's but gonna, um, like, run through some chicks over there. Yeah. She, oh, she's no. Sally Santos is one of the best one twenty five. I, I honestly thought she beat like Shevchenko with the belt. Like Santos is legit. So that's why. I, I would never bet Fiora like huge in this fight because I think Blanchfield is like that good. But Santos, she, she or um not why am I saying uh Blanchfield, she she's never fought five rounds. Um I just I just think if if Fior is able to like man, manage distance at all and is able to basically just stay upright and like use the like I think she there's a lot of ways that she could win here. And it wouldn't shock me if she was able to like, even like come on late, because I feel like even in like watching back the sand, I watched Sandals fight this week, and Blanchfield, I feel like at the end of that fight, one off just pure like heart, which like just like she just would never stop, like, just like was able to hold her against the cage, but she, it was at the same time she was like dying, like her cardio I think was it was like good. It's weird to say it was almost good about the same. Like she showed such like resiliency to like fight through it that you could tell she was like exhausted. But five rounds, I wonder if she'll be able to do that. She's a lot younger. I don't know. I just I, I think Fior at at plus odds at plus one hundred and fifty or better. I think it's I think that's where I'm going to be at. Yeah, my counterpoint would be. We look at Aaron and we think about other where she's come from. Oh, Aaron was okay. Um, and I know Manoa is a completely different beast, but Jessica Andrade, we were like, just just keep her, like keep her, avoid the takedowns, work the range. And obviously Manoa is a lot bigger, but she took her down and then just like inst the smoked her, yep. Smoked and then her. we saw her against Molly, and it was a, there was a little bit of that 
Molly do the same thing. And obviously, Mano was bigger and whatnot. These Mano is, I think, better fighters than these women I'm bringing up. Mano also, she kind of faded in that fight late against Rose. Um, it's true. It's and fair. And like it's Rose, fair. and I'm gonna be honest, like Rose there, I, I that kind of gave me a little bit of a like. If you're fading in that, maybe Aaron could, even if it goes, it, it gets extended a little bit. She could. But, I mean, my my bet on Aaron would be, like, she gets it done in round one or round two. And if she doesn't, that's my, like, the equity of the okay. of yeah. me knowing that I'm betting uh, why it would lose. Like, if I'm looking at the fight, that's how I'd kind of cap it. And um, so I don't know if I'm just going to stay on minus 180. Just take that. Maybe I'll look at the, the props once they're out. And... It, it this is a good fight. I like Mano. When Mano fought, I think Maya, Maya had her up against the cage, and she she defended the takedown. And maybe Mano has gotten better since then, and will avoid these situations. But if that's Aaron, she's taking it down. And I think, but also off the top of my head, I don't know how great Mano is off her back. So like maybe she has good sub defense, and if she does, has good sub defense, takes her in the deep waters, there could be a scenario where it's like oh she could find a finish late or even like. Win and be a decision. You know, everything you said about, like, I don't I don't uh, blame you. And even the, like, the round one, round two sub, I totally, like, I think if she gets a sub, it probably is, like, early. Yeah. Like, I, don't, I, I would be not, I wouldn't say, I would say, like, surprised if she, if she was, like, a fifth round sub or, like, a fourth round sub. I looked at that. The fifth round sub for uh, her is plus 15,000. Like, I just think it's, I, <laughs> I think it's way more likely if she's, like, if she, her ground game is, like, that much better. That she's able to do something like that, I think we see it early. Mano does hit hard, though. I could see like Mano landing early and really. I, I, to be honest, when, when I when I visualize the fight in my head, I just have this weird thing of like of her like real of Fior Fior really coming on late. Even though you did make good points that Rose had a good third round against her, but I just see Fior like coming on late and like landing some like big strikes. So I feel like Blanchfield she she did decent with that in the Santos fight, but she kind of always it was like always kind of like she was like throwing and like right into like a takedown like always like it, she never was like really staying like consistently where if you're like makes her have to do that at all like later in the fight i think it could be a big problem for her and also i think the age gap's a pretty big one here um and that i think it is it's 10 years um we don't we we kind of forget i mean aaron's 24 yes yeah, yeah. she's crazy she's, she's she's very young and um this is a big spot for her. She's from the area. Yeah, it's a Jersey big card. girl. It's on. I think it's on ESPN. Right? Yeah, it is. It's Headline on ESPN. Spot, Jersey yeah. card. And it'll obviously, be, main event. It'll be on after all the 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 games are over. The yeah, day because it's, it's 10 p.m. main card. 10 p.m. and so. Oh yes, yes, yeah, so, yeah. March Madness, like the final yeah. four. Yeah, whatever. yeah. Um, so this is a big time. Oh yeah, I'll be home from WrestleMania. Or Elite Eight. I mean, this. I like the final four. Elite Eight. Or WrestleMania Elite ends at 11. So yeah, so like she'll have a like she'll. This is a big moment for her, and also for Mano too. But Aaron, someone that can come, it's kind of goes, you could spin that in the favor for Mano because this is all, like, she's 34. She needs this you, one. You need this one. She needs a title shot. Like, she needs it. And then Aaron, if she doesn't get it, I mean, she, she'll, she'll still be around. For sure. I wonder if anyone's going to go to WrestleMania and this fight card. You could do it. You could pull it off. The timing wise? WrestleMania is in Philly. It ends at 11. You'll miss the first two fights on the main card, but you'll be able to see. That'd be wild to buy tickets, though. Just It'd be to wild. To like, it would be wild. Literally just to see, like, the maybe maybe, maybe two main, two fights, maybe three. You're saying it ends at 11? Like, the main card will be, like, two fights in already. Yeah. And you'll have to drive from Philly to AC. Yeah. And also, it's it's going to be, it's always a bit getting out True. of uh, WrestleMania. WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, also, another thing I want to bring up uh, for the, like, maintain distance Mano is bigger than Aaron, but Aaron has the reach advantage. Yeah, I know it's like one inch, right? It's like yeah, 66, yeah. 65. Now, uh, but obviously Mano's a, a much better striker. But even like, I mean, Aaron's had some moments on her feet where I'm like, oh, you're, you're getting better. And like as a young fighter, she is someone that is is getting better at that. So, Oh, I'm an idiot. MPI is right. At WrestleMania is next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I got my weekends fucked up because they've wait, been wait, asking wait, me wait, about wait, travel wait. for it and everything. Yeah. We were just talking Final Four Elite. Eight. Like we we're yeah. all messed up. We're all messed up. Pause. Pause. No, I don't, I don't think that was pause worthy. We're all we're messed all messed up. up. Uh, I don't I think don't that's know. like I, I, we're, we're, I think that's what we're reaching. That's a quick pause. It's a quick pause. Hit play again. <laughs> um, that was the card though. That was the Atlantic City card. Not going down during WrestleMania. 
make that very clear. So you can do both. Oh, you were right. <laughs> you can easily do both. You can make both. <laughs> you had yeah. a week to get that. <laughs> a full week. Um, that's the card. Thank you for uh, watching. We'll, because there's no WrestleMania this weekend, maybe we'll be live after this one. Will you guys be able to go live? I can. This? It would be at like, be really like late. two in the morning. You know, I will. I mean, we'll be here streaming till at least like the second. I mean, the second game start at like nine, nine, like nine thirty. So we'll be here late anyway. I, I, I'm good to stream. I'll be. I would. I'll go. be good. Yeah. All right. Cool. You sicko. So the sickos uh, will, will be up. Yeah. Follow us on Spin and Backfist for all the updates on that stuff and streaming and stuff like that. Um, and we'll talk to you then.